Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Submarines are essential to modern naval warfare, used for stealthy and fearsome means of extending military influence. Because these boats can patrol under the surface where they are all but invisible, shining anywhere from grid plotting to strategic deterrence. Submarines are armed with some of the most advanced sonar and communication systems in existence, and can track enemy ships for hundreds or thousands of miles away without them having any clue what's happening. Submarines are powerful enough not just to launch from where it is safe, but directly at an attacker, striking first before disappearing again within seconds back into the submerged darkness of the oceans of the world. Submarines also grant a significant tactical advantage. The fact that they are silent and can remain underwater for weeks means they can launch surprise attacks, as well as escape any countermeasures. Submarines can also deploy nuclear or conventional weapons, including ballistic missiles, which can strike targets thousands of miles away. They form part of a nation's second strike capability, meaning even if a country results in being hit, it has the ability to retaliate with all but unstoppable force. This is in addition to the capability of submarines to perform clandestine tasks, such as inserting special forces into enemy territory or laying mines and conducting surveillance in hostile waters. Submarines rule the depths and offer us a strategic advantage, securing control over these vital domains while presenting potential challengers with an enduring deterrent in our increasingly competitive global environment. Life on a nuclear sub, like the USS New Mexico, consists of several key departments, all critical to keeping that ship sailing. The galley, or mess, is the center of crew morale, feeds people with meals, and acts as a break from the workspace. Weapons, including torpedoes and tomahawk missiles, are regularly looked after and readied by the armaments department. The maintenance is responsible for ensuring all systems, such as propulsion and those to control the environment, are running correctly and repairs when required. These decisions directly affect the ability of highly trained technicians in the control room to navigate and maintain depth, ultimately determining a submarine's success or failure on its mission. This approach to generating a variety of cross-functional mini-teams results in an integrated and robust crew designed for long-term deep-sea exploration missions. Uh -huh. 
from the day-to-day -day operations aboard a nuclear submarine, it's essential to delve into the very foundation and function of these maritime leviathans. The design of a submarine is a marvel of modern engineering, tailored to operate efficiently under the pressures and challenges of the ocean depths. The concept of a self-contained vessel underneath the sea has already been in the human imagination for centuries. In order to travel underwater, submarines must function by adhering to some key laws of nature, including Archimedes' principle for buoyancy and Boyle's law. These vessels are designed to manage the extreme conditions of the ocean depths. Submarines are built with a double hull structure. The outer hull leads to its streamlined design, and inside, there is a thick pressure hull that provides protection for submariners from high underwater pressures and cold temperatures. Like an airplane, submarines have a rudder for steering and diving planes to control the depth. Newer submarines like the advanced Virginia-class sub, recently developed by General Dynamics, also feature extra bow plane control surfaces at many speeds. Building a submarine starts with a lot of planning. Engineers decide on everything from its size and shape to what kind of engines and weapons it will have. Once the design is set, it's time to gather the right materials. Submarines need super strong materials like high strength steel and titanium because they have to withstand deep sea pressures. The hull is the frame of the submarine. It consists of a deck, inside dive and cargo housings. Large steel plates are cut, formed individually to the desired shape, and then welded together over both sides via the outer and inner hull layers. Inside these layers are ballast tanks, where water can be stored to help the submarine sink, and other compartments, which also fill with seawater when submerged. Those ballast tanks are vital. They allow water in to weigh the submarine down and then pump it out to lift it back up again. The construction of these aquaplanes is precise, as they need to be strong and sealed off perfectly to handle the ocean pressures. The submarine consists of various sections inside and outside, partitioned for crew members, engines, and mechanisms such as torpedoes. The interior is carefully configured to support life underwater and keep a submarine functioning. 550, 26 up. Ultimately, this new submarine runs through its paces to ensure it works correctly and safely.
It takes a while and many steps, but it's all about removing any doubt that the submarine can accomplish what it needs to do underwater. As we've navigated the complex design and operation of submarines, it's equally crucial to understand how these underwater fortresses sustain their missions over prolonged periods. Replenishment of supplies is not just a logistical need, but a critical factor in maintaining the operational readiness and morale of the crew. Resupplying a submarine requires exact and complex procedures based on what supplies need to be obtained when needed. Helicopters deliver lighter items like food, medical supplies, or parts to subs that partially surface. A quick operation ensues, and the crew collects these packages from the top of the submarine to reduce exposure. Cargo airlift, like C-17, fly over to the location she's at and drop things into the ocean for her. Built to float, these packages are then collected up by a small team in a rigid hulled inflatable boat. Capable of remaining on task for longer periods, this dual use enables submarines to be more effective when employed as strategic assets. Modern submarines, particularly those used by the military, do not typically carry conventional boats on board for emergency evacuations at sea. The primary reason is the premium on space inside a submarine and the complexity of storing and deploying a boat from such a vessel. However, submarines are equipped with sophisticated safety and survival equipment designed to address emergencies. Navigation of submarines through the Arctic is particularly problematic, especially when that entails breaking up thick ice packs on surfacing. Submarines fitted for Arctic operation can come through ice, occasionally surfacing only with a visible sail or tower. In this process of what is called ice surfacing, certain calculations are needed to determine where the thin spots are for them to be broken. The poured sails from these submarines are reinforced for this, as they were designed to punch through ice. But when nature forms thick ice above the hatches, crew members are tasked with hacking through the frozen surface using chainsaws and picks. Arctic submarine missions are key to advancing scientific understanding of the Arctic, augmenting maritime domain awareness in a challenging operating environment, and maintaining presence against potential strategic competitors. They frequently participate in specialized exercises such as Ice X or Ice Exercise, which is conducted by navies to improve their skills for ice covered waters. The exercises improve the submarine's scientific and security missions, typifying how design and operations are necessary in these sorts of polar regions. The ability to surface through ice, 
a maneuver critical for strategic and research purposes, exemplifies the specialized capabilities of submarines tailored for polar conditions. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.